This question looks like it's gonna be a giant pain in the neck. And it kind of is, but it's not as bad as it looks if you know right away what they're asking. So we've actually seen a question almost identical to this in in like a, a topic sense uh, earlier in this section. We're being asked for the um, number of solutions, but instead of kind of trying to figure out how many solutions there are, we're instead being told, right? There are no solutions. And when it comes to the number of solutions, we're, we're, the first thing we need to ask is, do we have an X squared? If we have a quadratic, different rules, different uh, process. Here we don't, right? These are, these are basically lines. They don't look like lines, but that's how we're gonna wanna think about it. We wanna think about it in terms of Y equals MX plus B. And specifically, when we have no solutions, we are interested in the, the M, right? We want the slopes to be the same, okay? But we will have different Y intercepts, but because there's no like constant attached to any of the y-intercept pieces, right? So uh, I won't have to worry about that. I, I kind of know that that's going to be different without having to worry about it just because there's no way for it not to be different, I guess, and for us to have no solutions. Basically, the only constant, the only unknown in this question is the p. The x and the y are going to behave like the x and y and y equals mx plus b, so you can kind of see there's nothing else. So what this allows me to do is basically get rid of a lot of these terms right away. So I know I'm not going to be concerned with this 4 7 here. There's no uh, variable attached to it. I know I'm not going to be concerned with this 15 4 here. There's no variable attached to it, so we can kill it. And this 7 4 right here. So really all we're looking for is to kind of make sure that these X and Y terms are in a format where the Y is alone. So that is basically y equals mx plus b, but ignoring the b, because we're really interested in that m. Those slopes need to be the same. So let's start manipulating things. So let's take this first equation and start manipulating it. So what I would do here is I would uh, subtract the 7 eighths, I guess, from uh, the left side. So we're going to do, uh, I'll just write the whole thing, 7 eighths y minus 5 eighths x equals uh, uh, negative 7 eighths y. Actually, now that I write it, let's, let's add this part over plus 7 eighths y, that way we can kind of get the y on that side, we don't have to worry about the negatives, this is going to add 5 eighths to this side, All right, so this cancels, uh, this cancels, and this is going to leave us with 14 eighths y, I'll reduce that in a second, is equal to 5 eighths x. Now before I reduce it, I'm actually just going to multiply to get y alone, because remember that's the point, is I want to get y completely isolated, right, no negatives, no numbers, nothing attached to it, just has to be alone. So I'll leave it as eight, uh, 14 eighths instead of reducing it, because I can see I've got an 8 over here, so if I multiply by 8 fourteenths, then that kills the 8, so I don't really have to reduce this at all uh, in any complicated way, right, so y is now equal to 5 fourteenths x, and so right there, that's the number that matters. That's the slope. Normally, right, if I hadn't killed off that whatever number it is that's crossed out in the first equation, I'd have a B here. But I don't care about that B because when I'm asked for no solutions for lines, it's really all about that slope. The y-intercept might matter in other questions, but here it just, I knew it wasn't going to matter because there was nothing I could do. It was just going to be whatever it was. There's no variable attached. There's no uh, constant attached. So it's got to be that 5 fourteenths. But now we have to do the same thing for the bottom equation. And so this one's actually easier, but you might think you don't have to do much. So we have 5 fourths x is equal to py. So again, we need to get y alone. So in order to do that, we're going to get rid of the p. So we can divide by p, but for the sake of thinking about fractions, it's the same as multiplying by 1 over p, right? Because p on the top, p on the bottom is going to go away. But if I do that here, what's convenient is I don't have to think about dividing fractions. I can just be like, oh, okay, this is going to be 5 over 4p x equals y. So again, I'm interested in the slope. So now the final step here is these are supposed to be the same. So I can just create a separate equation that makes them look the same, right? I mean, that's just what the, the equal symbol does is it makes things kind of the same. So 5 fourteenths is equal to 5 over 4p. So we can do some cross multiplying and dividing, but at least here you might see that, okay, the 14 and the 4p have to match up. So 14 is equal to 4p. We divide by 4, divide by 4. Now I'm going to reduce. This is 7 over 2. So p is equal to 7 halves, which is 3.5. So either one is uh, something you can enter. I'm just going to, I would keep it as 7 halves because that's what I found it as, as a fraction. Um, but there you go. Now, I don't think this is that bad. It's tedious but it's not hard. 
And we have to remember that the SAT is going to try to make questions hard in lots of different ways. I would much rather have a question where I know exactly what I'm doing and I just have to go through the motions than one where I have to try to be clever and like figure out something I've never seen before. The key though is for me, I've seen hundreds of questions exactly like this. They're never exactly like it in the sense that like they don't always look the same. But as soon as I saw no solutions and I recognized that we had linear equations, I, I, I knew it. I knew exactly what I was going to have to do to solve. I knew how to get the slopes the same. I knew to, you know, uh, manipulate these things so that they could kind of give me the slope, the y equals mx plus b format. So there are a lot of things that I kind of knew without having to really try hard. So these are good questions for people who just like being a robot and kind of going through the motions. Um, but you've got to memorize some things in order to be able to kind of run the right program in your robot brain. There might be ways of doing this that involve uh, Desmos, right? We could put these equations into Desmos and then use the, the slider for P. The problem is our answer is not an integer. So that can be risky, right? We, we, we might have trouble finding the right value if we're using the slider. In this case, 3.5 isn't a terrible decimal, but what if it was like 3.52, right? Like that could happen, I guess. We could have a fraction that equals that, and then we might not necessarily see that because the slider in Desmos doesn't get that um, specific. The other problem is uh, when we're talking about them having no solutions, we need to see that the lines are parallel. But that also can be kind of hard to see depending on the zoom, right? Like they might look pretty close to parallel, but maybe one slightly askew and, and it only intersects way off screen. So that can be hard to, to visualize as well. So um, I, I tend to think that when we are asked about the number of solutions or we're given the number of solutions for equations that don't have an X squared that are lines, Desmos is probably not the best way to go. We could do it if we really needed to, but I think that these are cases where algebra is going to be um, safer. But as you can see, yeah, there's fractions, it's tedious. Uh, we might've been able to do some things here to make this easier, like multiplying by eight to make the fractions go away if you wanted. But honestly, the fractions don't bother me. Uh, I'm comfortable with my fraction rules. And if you're not comfortable with your fraction rules, ooh, then you really, you're gonna have some other troubles besides this. You know, there's lots of, lots of hard questions. And, and if you're not good with fractions and basic numeracy ideas, then yeah, you're, you got other things to practice. But um, be prepared. They're gonna ask you in multiple times on each SAT uh, talking about the number of solutions for equations. So you gotta memorize the rules.